Oh man, that food was fantastic. Holy cow! Gosh! Like, wow. I mean, it was wicked expensive, but hey, money well spent, honestly. And I really wish that I had gotten what you ordered. Because the chicken from your dish was insanely good. Oh my gosh. Dang it, now I... Okay, next time we come back here, I'm ordering what you have, alright? I guess you could say I'm having what she's having. <laughs> okay, that was a bad joke. Bad joke, bad joke. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. Alright. Oh, 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 let me get the door for you. My lady. <laughs> ah, well, I think I can say for certain that this anniversary is a fantastic one. It is one that is going relatively swell and smooth, don't you think? I can totally agree with that. Definitely. I can say that it is splendid, actually. No broken bones, no bruises, no broken ribs, no ER visits, and no MRIs needed. I think we are having a fantastic anniversary date, don't you think? <laughs> God, your smile is so gorgeous, you know that? Like, it's so beautiful. Come here. I love you. Happy anniversary, love. Gosh, it's crazy to think that two years ago, two years ago, you and I got back together. You were in my ER on this day two years ago. And we're still going strong. Two years later. Actually, hold on. Do we really want to count the few months you and I were separated? Because we, we still loved each other. It's just we were separated because of a misunderstanding between my mom and you. Yeah, honestly, I don't want to count it either because you and I were separated, but we still loved each other deep down. And we just, we just were separated for a short period of time. And by short period of time, I mean like multiple months. But we found our way back and we're still going strong. So let's just say that the few months you and I were separated was simply just a road bump, you know, like a major one, but like something that we were easily able to push forward through and come out on top. So technically, we are five years strong. Yeah, it sounds a lot more romantic when I word it that way, doesn't it? <laughs> now, before we head home, there is one more place that I want to take you for this date. ELC. It'll have something to do with what I have in the trunk. <laughs> All right, let's go. God almighty, isn't it crazy that 1998 is going by so quickly? It's insane. Like, wicked insane. Like, ever since you and I graduated high school, it feels like that time has been going by a lot quicker than usual. Like, it feels like yesterday that you and I just graduated. But really, it's been over five years. Gosh, we're getting old. Hey, do you remember that movie that we recently watched? The one that's still playing in theaters, Saving Private Ryan? That was such a good movie. Like, absolutely insane. Spielberg is a genius with film. Like, he's like the movie Jesus. It's insane how he's able to create such masterpieces. And that movie was also really sad. And God, it was so, so brutal. I, I, I still can't get that, I, I still can't get that scene with the medic out of, out of my head. Yeah, yeah, when that scene came on, you saw, you saw how I was, I was, I was a mess, dude. You know, this actually reminds me that, um, you remember when I went to go to the movies with my parents and grandparents? Yeah, well, we watched Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, it was actually my grandfather's idea to go and watch it. Yeah, at that time, I had not seen the movie. And after I went and watched it with my parents, that was when I watched it with you. Um, my grandfather wanted to watch it because he wanted to see if the film accurately portrayed the war and didn't dumb it down for Hollywood effect. And 
obviously, as you know, it didn't do that at all. It it accurately portrayed what the war looked like. Um, I remember that when we went to the theater, there were a couple of other fellow World War II veterans there with their families. And it was quite the sight, actually. I had never seen that many World War II vets. So many people who put their lives on the line for us. So we sat down, and that was when the movie started. And when the opening scene first started, the World War II veterans that we saw when we came in, a majority of them immediately got up and left. Like, as soon as the people on screen started to die, I saw at least three of them immediately get up and walk out. The movie hadn't even been on screen for, I think, five minutes, and they were already out. And as the movie kept going, we could hear some of them crying. The ones that stayed, some of them were sobbing. The others were completely silent, and they were just watching the screen completely like like a thousand yard stare and eventually the rest of them all got up and left except my grandfather actually he watched the entire thing without saying a single word like he was completely silent it was almost like he was a statue and he um he finally got up after the credits were rolling we got up collected our popcorn and our drinks and threw it out and then we left the theater I I will never forget the sight that I saw when I left it right outside of the theater there were multiple World War II veterans sitting with their families and they were crying they were crying their eyes out some of them were hyperventilating some of them were even vomiting and that that is an image that will... I'm not ever going to forget that sight for a long time. So we made our way out, and we were walking to the parking lot, and we get to our car, and then my grandfather finally breaks his silence. He... Fuck. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's just... I, I just need a second. No, 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 no. I, I do want to tell you this. I do, I do want to tell you this. I just need a minute. Yes, holding your hand is making me feel a lot better. Um... So... My grandfather started crying like sobbing uncontrollably he sat down on the ground and just he just cried and the sight it broke me it severely broke me because I'm I'm used to seeing my mother cry because she's a bit of an emotional person she um she sometimes cries at sad movies, sometimes when she's reading a sad book, and I can tell when she's, like, really heartbroken, and I'm kind of used to seeing her cry. But my father, it's rare to see him cry, and it breaks me every time. That is, like, something that, it's like a knife cutting through your heart. Now, take that and times that by a thousand. That was the pain that I felt when I saw my grandfather fall to his knees and start crying. I hugged him immediately. I, I just gave him the biggest hug I had ever given to anybody. I was crying too, and my father was, and my mom, and my grandma. My father even said that he had never seen his father like that. So we just took a minute for him to just cry. And told him that we loved him. And that 
we really are happy he's here and that he's and that he's safe and that he's so and that, and that we're so sorry he had to go through that it I, I think I think we stayed in that parking lot for like four hours because I remember that when we left the theater it was daytime and by the time we finally got in the car and ready to go the sun was almost done setting um, we actually met this other family who was also with their World War II veteran family member and my grandfather had a conversation with them and we talked with the family and we said that the movie pretty much did the same thing to their veteran and it was we, we kind of bonded and they were really nice and then we got in the car and then we left my grandpa doesn't like to talk about his involvement in the war for obvious reasons and prior to us going to the movies he didn't say a word about his involvement the only thing that we knew about his involvement was that he fought in World War II that's it we didn't know if he was what what like infantry division he was in we didn't know where he was deployed in we didn't know what battalion he was in we didn't even know what rank he was all we knew was that he was in World War II and that was it until that day when we were on our way home he actually opened up to us and told us some of his stories he signed up as soon as he became of age in 1943 and he was deployed in 1944 after going through the basic training and he was deployed on Omaha Beach so he knows exactly what happened he has first hand experience of what those true horrors were and he said that if he had one word to describe what he witnessed that word would be bloodbath that word god it, it sent chills down my spine it still does to this day Ugh. but he didn't go into detail of what he saw on the beach but he did tell us a few things one is that the portrayal of the D-Day landings were extremely accurate. And another thing he told us is that his entire squad was wiped out. Like, within two minutes of them getting onto the beach, the entirety of his squad was gunned down. He was the only survivor. And um, I, I said something along the lines of, damn, you one of the lucky ones. And he immediately responded and said, no. I am not a lucky one. The lucky ones are the ones that didn't go at all. That sent a chill down my spine again. And, and then he told us that whenever he wears his World War II veteran outfit, he always gets compliments and comments from people thanking him for his service. And he does appreciate the hell out of that. He appreciates that so much. But there's one thing he does not like. He does not like it when people call him a hero. And there's a reason why. He says that the real heroes have already been buried. That... That put some tears in my eyes, babe. I'll tell you that. I, um, don't know much about his time in the war. That is actually as much as I know. And I don't intend to try to learn more because... I don't... I don't want to have him go through that again because the movie opened up a wound that he sealed a long time ago and I don't want I really don't want to open that wound back up and make him relive those moments again and I especially don't want to see him cry again so I have let it be Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandfather's doing a lot better now. That wound has since healed. He is doing a lot better, and he is actually doing really well because he's currently on vacation with my grandma. Mm-hmm. They're currently in Hawaii right now celebrating their 53rd wedding anniversary. Yep. They are in their 70s, enjoying the time of their lives. 53 years together. Through thick and thin, they have not stopped loving each other. That is so sweet. And he also wanted to go there to go and visit Pearl Harbor so that he could pay his respects. 
which is completely understandable. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the story of my grandpa's involvement in World War II and how saving Private Ryan really meant a lot to him, even though he's only seen it once. Oh, I don't think I ever told you. My father was actually drafted. He um, actually cracked a pretty funny joke about it. He um, told me that out of all of the lotteries that he has played in his life, that was the one lottery that he won, and he absolutely hated that he won. <laughs> yeah, his luck, his luck was not on his side. But it seems that luck was on his side after all, because when he was drafted, he went through the basic training, and he was set to be deployed in mid-1973, but Nixon announced that the war would be ending and that the U.S. would be pulling out of Vietnam. So he pretty much went through basic training all for nothing. But he does have a National Defense Service Medal, a medal that you earn when you complete basic training, so he has that. You know, during his time in basic training, he would always write letters to my mom, and he would always talk about how much he misses her and how much he can't wait to finally have her in his arms again, and that he loves her and will come back home in one piece for her. And he actually, get this, he proposed to her over the letter. Yeah, it's... <laughs> He wanted it to be a special moment, but unfortunately, with him being off in basic training and him thinking about the possibility of him not coming home, he just, he wanted to, like, you know, he wanted to know. So he proposed, and he waited a few days, and then he received a letter from her, and when he opened it, it was a piece of paper that had one word on it, and it took up the entirety of the paper, and it was just the word, yes. So now he knew. He knew that she wanted to get married. So he promised her that when he got home, they would get married. And it was as if God was on his side and was like, yeah, I got you, bro. Nixon would then announce that the war was ending. And then after, after he finished his basic training, he went home. In my mom's words, she said that she had no control over her legs. All that she was doing was just sprinting towards him as soon as she saw him. And they hugged, they kissed, then they got married, and then a few years later, June 18th, 1976, I was born. And here I am now. I guess that's why my parents were so insistent on me becoming a doctor. Because, like, think about it. My grandfather is a World War II veteran. My dad almost went to the Vietnam War, and both of them in a way, served the country. And they, I guess my mom and dad were hoping that I would do the same, but since there's no wars going on, the next best thing is a doctor because they save people. They help the people of the United States and help them get better. So I guess that's why they were so insistent. They wanted me to do something that could contribute to the country. They deemed anything that was, like, not really helpful as a distraction, and I guess that's... That's how they figured that you were a distraction to me as well, because you weren't exactly helping me achieve my goal in their eyes. But uh, thankfully, I'm so glad that we were able to work things out between them and tell them that you were practically encouraging me to keep going. And of course, as you know, they would eventually apologize. And don't worry about it, hon. They like you. They think that you are perfect for me. They really, really love you. That's a good thing. Consider yourself lucky. Oh, it looks like we're here. Let me just pull in here. And here we are. You'll see what this is. I just need to grab the stuff out of the trunk. Okay. That's... Mm-hmm. I brought my guitar with me. It's for a very special occasion. Right this way, my love. Okay, now stop. Don't come any closer, okay? 
Close your eyes. Give me just a second, okay? There we go. Okay. All right. Here, take my hand. Keep those eyes closed, okay? All right. Follow me. Come on. There you go. Almost there. Okay, stop. Ready? One, two, three. Open your eyes. What do you think, love? Isn't the view amazing? The stars are out, and the lights in the city are all on. Isn't it so pretty? Here, have a seat. Ah! I, uh, got us some wine, actually. Not alcoholic, of course, because I, um, have to be the one to drive us home, and I can't exactly drive when I have alcohol in my system. You know how I am when it comes to wine. So, got non-alcoholic instead. Oh, jeez, where are my manners? Oh, my goodness. Here, allow me to pour you a glass, my lady. There you go. And now let me get my guitar. There we go. Yeah. All right. What is this all for? I'll explain. Love, I have been brainstorming so many ideas on how to get this anniversary done right. And I finally have it. I want to make this a special night for you. And that is why I've been practicing this song in my spare time. And I think I got it right. Baby, you have been by my side through thick and thin pushing me to achieve greater things I never would have been able to achieve on my own. And ever since we first watched Titanic, you have been in love with this song. You have been so, so mesmerized by it. Every time, you always have some kind of tears in your eyes every time you hear it. And since it's your favorite song from your favorite movie... This, this is for you.
Honey? Honey, are you okay? You're, uh, crying. Are, are you... Oh, come here. Oh. Oh. I love you. I love you so, so much. Happy anniversary, love. Now there's one more surprise for you. That song was just one of the gifts. This other one is not only important to you, but to me as well. It's just as important as the necklace. In fact, it's more. Now, this is something that I've kept a secret from you for a while. And dearest, Remember, no matter what happens, I will love you. I will support you, honor you, comfort you, and keep you close to me at hand. As long as we both shall live. I'll be here with you until death do us part. It's not going to change. In fact, every day our love grows stronger and stronger. Every date we go on, every time we hug, every time we kiss... My love for you grows more and more. That's why I always like to smother you with kisses. So when I ask you this question, I am asking a million questions with it. But they all rely on the answer to this one question I have for you. So, my love, will you marry me? You will? <laughs> come here, come here. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo -hoo -hoo! Oh my goodness. Your face lit up so much. I've never seen you smile like that before. Oh my gosh. You look so pretty. Your smile is so beautiful. I love you. I love you to the moons and back. To the heavens and earth. I will always love you. Come here. Give me your hand. It's a perfect fit. Thank goodness. Happy anniversary, hon. Come here. I love you. And don't you worry. I've already talked to your parents. I have their blessing. Gosh, I can't believe it. We're gonna get married! <laughs> <laughs>